Did you know that there's almost 40 HTTP verbs? Now don't let that stress you out because if you're doing RESTful web development, you probably only need to know about five of them and the official specification only actually define nine, arguably 10. Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor in chief over at the serverside.com and I wanna quickly take you through the world of HTTP verbs and HTTP methods. Now, if you really wanna understand the HTTP verbs, the HTTP method, you kinda of gotta go back in time to the very start of the HTTP protocol. When the HTTP protocol started, it only defined three methods. Yes, three methods, get, get still around today the purpose of the get operation is to fetch resources from a server so i mean in the early days of the http protocol that was just for getting web pages so anytime you ask for a web page in a browser that's a get operation anytime you download a file from the server that's a get operation anytime your browser goes out and reaches for an image reaches for a css file reaches for any resource that it might need in order to display the page that's going through an HTTP GET operation. So the GET operation is probably the most commonly invoked of all of the HTTP verbs. Now, there was also uh, another method that came out with HTTP 1.0, and that was the HEAD operation. And the HEAD operation, it just gives you the headers from a resource that's sitting on the server. So you can put in a URL, invoke the HEAD operation, and it'll give you things like the creation date of that object and maybe even the size of the object. You got to remember that back in the 90s when the internet was just starting off, you know, uh, it might be interesting to check the size of a file before you download it, right? I mean, because it could be huge and in the 1990s, huge was like 10K, I guess. So, so there was the head operation uh, and then there was post. And so basically to get anything on the internet, you were just doing get operations all the time. And anytime you wanted to go to the server and submit data, send form data, ask for data to be processed for you, all of that went through a post operation. So that's sort of the, the origin of the HTTP protocol, get for getting resources and sending data to the server and having things processed, created, updated, deleted, it all went through a post operation. Now, when the HTTP 1.1 protocol came out, they introduced a bunch of new methods. If you're doing RESTful web development, a lot of them aren't gonna be that interesting to you. So for example, they introduced a connect method, which uh, allows the, the HTTP protocol to connect to a, uh, a proxy server and create a VPN connection. There is trace that's used for troubleshooting. There's options which is actually cool. That one will actually tell you all of the different HTTP methods that a resource on the server will support. Um, but more importantly, HTTP 1.1 introduced the put and the delete operations. Now, as I said, with HTTP 1.0, all data submission, all form submission, all processing of data that happened on the server went through a post operation. But you know, the, the big heads at the uh, W3C Commission, or whoever it is that manages the HTTP protocol, they said, let's take a little bit of weight off the shoulders of that post method. And what they did was they introduced the put operation. The idea of the put operation is that you package up all of the data that would describe a resource that exists on the server, you also has the exact URL of that resource. You have the exact URL of that resource and you send all of the data that describes that resource to the server at the URL of that resource. And all of that data is used to completely replace the resource that exists there. Now, if no resource exists there, we create a new resource with a pivot operation. If a resource does exist there, we completely replace it with the data that gets sent to the server as part of the payload of that put operation. Note that it's not quite an update, right? Like you're actually just replacing the data on the server. And if you're only changing one or two fields in uh, a resource that's got a thousand fields, you've actually got to send all 1000 fields to that server so that when the server runs the put operation, it uses that data to completely replace the resource. Notice that Rust, that REST uh, and the HTTP protocols, it's not CRUD, right? It's not create, read, update, and delete. There's nuance here that makes it different. Also, 
they said, you know, we're going to introduce in HTTP 1.1 the delete method. And, well, the delete method is, is pretty self-evident. Given a URL, given a URL that points to a resource on the server, if you invoke that URL with a delete operation, well, the resource at that URL gets deleted. Surprise, surprise. And so that was the idea of HTTP 1.1. If we wanted to create new resources, replace resources on the server, that would always go through a put operation. If we wanted to delete a resource on the server, well, the delete operation is goes through the delete HTTP verb, the delete HTTP method. And then it's like anything else that's not covered by those methods, anything not covered by a get, anything not covered by a put, and anything not covered by a delete, that would fall in the domain of the post operation. Now, I guess I should add to that, the post operation shouldn't be replicating anything that head does, that options does, that trace does, or that connect does, but we don't really have a problem hitting the boundaries with a post operation for those particular uh, HTTP verbs. Now, there was uh, an extension to the HTTP protocol that came out and it introduced another method. And this other method was called patch. I always call it batch, but it's actually called patch. And what patch does is it allows you to update a server side resource without having to send an entire data representation with the payload that goes to the server. So it's kind of like a put in that it is going to update a resource on the server, maybe even create a resource on the server if that resource doesn't exist. But the idea is if you just want to update a couple of fields with a resource on the server, well, that patch operation can do that. You can update a resource on the server without having to send an entire complete representation. So those are the basic core HTTP protocol methods. Now, whenever you talk about the HTTP methods, one of the terms that you, you have to mention is idempotent. Some people mispronounce it idempotent. Um, it's actually idempotent. Idempotence is the idea that something can be invoked multiple times. And despite being invoked multiple times, it doesn't matter how many times it's invoked, but the server will remain in the same state. The HTTP specification says that put and delete operations have to be idempotent. Um, operations like get, trace, options, and head, they're idempotent too, but I mean, they don't ever change anything on the server, so it's just a given. Um, but put and delete operations have to be idempotent, while patch and post operations do not. Now, let me give you an example of an idempotent operation. Imagine that I wanted to delete uh, uh, a subscription to a newsletter, right? So there's a newsletter, I don't wanna be subscribed to it anymore. Uh, I send a delete operation to the server and hopefully my subscription is deleted. Now, if I was actually to invoke that 100 times, it doesn't matter, right? The end result is my subscriptions deleted. Doesn't matter whether I call it a hundred times, doesn't matter whether I call it a thousand times. Now, given maybe on the, the second or third invocation, the, the resource that, it rep, that represents it might be gone and the response might return a 404 error code rather than a 200 code telling me that the resource was deleted. Um, but the point is that the state of the server remains the same, right? My subscription is deleted. That would be a dempotent. Something that can be called multiple times over and over and over again is an adempotent method. Now, as I said, put and delete have to be a dempotent. Patch and post do not. And now let me give you an example of a post operation. Uh, let's say I want to increase my salary by 10%, right? If I kept invoking that time and time again, I'm not gonna end up with the same salary. Every time I invoke that method, my salary is gonna increase, right? I do it seven times, all of a sudden my salary has gone up uh, by 100%. Um, I, I run a, uh, I've got a little example where I create a, a RESTful API with Spring Boot and uh, I got a rock, paper, scissors game and I have a, an increase wins, increase losses and increase ties method. And so whenever you invoke that, the number of ties increases by one. That's definitely not a dempotent because if you call it 10 times, you end up going from maybe the number zero to the number 10. So 
That's the idea of adempotence. And patch and post operations do not need to be adempotent, but put and delete operations do. Anyways, there you go. That is uh, an overview of the core HTTP methods. Now, again, one of the things I want to emphasize is that REST is not CRUD. HTTP verbs are not SQL elements. Uh, there's a big difference between da doing database operations and creating a RESTful H API with the HTTP verbs. Now, there's similarities, but you know, the devil is in the details. Um, the put operation does not map perfectly to a create operation. Um, the post operation does not map perfectly to create or update. The delete operation, well, that actually maps pretty good to the crud operations delete operation, but um, you know, sometimes a post operation can end up deleting a resource as well as sort of a, an unsafe operation happens and there's some sort of side effect where resource is deleted. So, uh, and with the get operation, I guess the get operation is pretty good for, for doing a read, but sometimes a post operation will actually send a representation of an object back to a client as well, which would almost implement the idea of a database read. It would almost implement the, I almost kind of mimic some of the function of a get operation. So that's just to say, I see a lot of tutorials where the first thing they do when they talk about the HTTP verbs, the first thing they do when they talk about the HTTP methods is talk about how uh, put, post, delete, and patch map to create, read, update, and delete. And again, there's similarities. Most APIs use a post to create an object. Most APIs use a put to update an object. Most APIs use a delete to delete an object. And get is always a great way to get a representation of a resource from the server. But the deeper you go into the HTTP protocols and the, the, the more honest you want to be about your RESTful APIs, the more you realize that there's important nuance there that, that you want to observe. Otherwise, the clients of your RESTful APIs may get a little bit confused. Anyways, there you go. That is a, a big overview of the HTTP methods, of the HTTP verbs, certainly the important ones that you'll need to know if you want to do RESTful web development. Now, if you enjoyed that tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. I'm the editor-in-chief over there. We got lots of great tutorials on REST, Spring Boot, Python, DevOps, Git, Scrum. Uh, in fact, I've got a book uh, called JPA Made Easy. I'd love for you to take a look at it if you're into the Java Persistence API. I've also got a book called Pickering is Springfield if you're into The Simpsons. Um, and I've also been uh, helping out with uh, Darcy DeClute's latest book, which is a Scrum Master Certification Guide. So uh, I definitely suggest that you check the links. And uh, if you're interested in Agile, Scrum, JPA, or even The Simpsons, maybe pick up one of those resources. You can also follow me on Twitter, at CameronMCNZ. And if you're watching this on YouTube, why don't you subscribe on YouTube?